Over the course of our last few videos, we've taken a look at Bible study notes and how to get the most out of them. Well, today I'm going to talk about a Bible study method that will completely expand how you take Bible study notes, and we're getting into it right now. So let's roll the intro. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Bible Study Tips, where we help you learn the Bible, connect with God, and grow your faith in videos just like this one, where we take a deep dive into Bible study tools and methods that help you study God's Word better. I'm your host, LaRosa Johnson. So like I said in the intro, over the course of our last few videos, we've taken a look at Bible study notes and how to get the most out of them. We've taken a look at handwritten Bible notes, digital Bible notes, and even Logos Bible software as a tool for taking digital Bible study notes. Well, today, I want to show you a Bible study method that will completely expand how you take Bible study notes. And it's one that I'm really excited about. And it's called Zettelkasten Bible Study. So over the course of this video, we'll talk about what Zettelkasten Bible Study is, how to use it, and then we're gonna talk about how to liberate your Bible study notes so that they're never lost and that you have them forever. So if you're ready, let's dive right in. So if we're gonna talk about Zettelkasten Bible Study, we have to start with talking about what Zettelkasten is. And then once we understand what Zettelkasten is, we can then take the concept and idea of Zettelkasten and apply it to how we study God's word. So let's talk about Zettelkasten. Zettelkasten is a German word that's roughly translated as slip box. And it's a method of note taking that is really used a lot in research and academic settings. So let's talk about how it's used. So let's imagine that you're reading books, articles, and things like that to as part of your field of study and you want to remember these thoughts and concepts later so what you do is you're taking a quote from whatever you're reading and then you're putting it down on some kind of filing system so you're putting down your your quote but it doesn't just stop there what you're doing is you're taking that that thought or idea from someone else but then you're taking it and synthesizing it with your own thoughts and ideas so you're taking time to Think about that thought or idea that you've read somewhere else and putting it into your own words, essentially. And then once you've done that, you give it some kind of unique identifier and then you file it away. And that's really the heart of Zettelkasten. And what you can then do is when it comes time to do something later, like write a, an academic paper, you can then pull on those ideas and find whatever's going to like spark your creativity for writing a paper. So then you can pull out a note here, a note there. And then the beauty of this is you can take notes that are seemingly unrelated. And as you begin to think about them more, you may find connections between two unrelated ideas and how they merge and relate together in some, some way that the original authors did not originally see, but you see because you're now, you've thought about these ideas and now you're able to link them together. So when it comes to Zettelkasten, it's really similar to the Dewey Decimal system that we use in libraries. So with these unique identifiers, you're able to organize your notes, put them away, and then find them later so that you can know exactly where that note is so that you can find it at a future date. And that's exactly how the Dewey Decimal system works. It's organized by subjects, so then you can find it by author, so then you can go anywhere in the library, find the book that you're looking for. So that's one way of using Zettelkasten. And another way of using Zettelkasten is as a personal knowledge management system. So what that is, is really taking those ideas and concepts that you've read from elsewhere and synthesizing them into your own ideas. And I really like the way that Nick Milo puts it. He, he calls this linking your thinking. So it's not just about take, taking notes, but it's, it's about making notes. So you're not just taking someone else's ideas and then filing those ideas off so that you can pull them out later so that you have like a quote that you can use in a book or something. Instead, you're taking other people's thoughts and ideas, thinking about them yourself, and then you're making notes about those thoughts that you have so that they are then your ideas. Now, the concept of Zettelkasten is not something new. It's actually been around since about the 1500s in various forms. But in its most popular iteration, it was popularized by Nicholas Luhmann. And Nicholas Luhmann was a sociologist who had an extensive Zettelkasten system. 
His personal Zettelkasten had over 90,000 notes in it, and he used these 90,000 notes to author over 40 books and hundreds of articles. And it's just amazing what he was able to do with this Zettelkasten or slip box method of note taking. And the beauty of it is he did all of this on a physical index card. But here's the one key about Zettelkasten that we have to keep in mind is that when we're, ta when we're talking about taking notes, we're taking one idea and we're making one note. So we're not taking like multiple ideas where like I have like two or three quotes that I want to remember and then putting them all in one place. No, we're talking about one quote and then taking your thoughts and ideas about that one quote, putting a unique identifier to it and putting that away. And then each of those quotes is its own individual note. So it's one idea for one note. And then as you begin to take these individual notes, then you can merge them together into something new that is something that's kind of outside your Zettelkasten system. So with that said, let's talk about how we can apply this to Bible study. So when it comes to Zettelkasten Bible study, another name that we can call it is Connected Biblical Thinking. And Zettelkasten Bible study is less a Bible study method as it's more a method of taking Bible study notes. So it's taking the concept of individual ideas or thoughts like the Zettelkasten method and applying that to Bible study. Because if you look at Bible study, a lot of what we do is we take a passage or a thought um, or like a theme or subject and we make like long notes about that one thing. Instead, what we're doing is we're taking one singular thought or idea, making a note about it, and then we're synthesizing those ideas and notes later at a later point. So to illustrate this, let's go over to my computer and we'll take a look at my desktop and show you how this looks in a real world setting. All right, so like I said, the Zettelkasten Bible study method is less a method of studying the Bible and more a method of note taking. It is not a new way to study or understand scripture in the sense of giving you a set of tools to explore scripture. Instead, it's a means of note taking that allows you to explore the interconnected nature of scripture and how you connect those pieces together yourself as you study. So in other words, Zettelkasten serves as more of an addition or enhancement to your Bible study than a means of studying scripture in and of itself. So the concept itself is simple. As you read and study scripture, you make a note wherever you have a thought or idea about what you're reading. And then in that note, you write your thoughts, reference any related passages, and so on. So as an example of that, I have Obsidian open right now, and I wanna show you a note that I made while reading Matthew chapter 16. So while reading Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 stood out to me. So I decided to make a note about it. And I gave it a quick title so that I can remember the subject of what the note was about, and then I typed out my thoughts. And then what you can see here is that as I was making my notes, there was a great connectedness between Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, and 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And then toward the end of this note, I had a thought about the concept of there being different levels of judgment. And instead of expanding on that in this particular note, what I did is I just made a link to that idea so that then I can make a link, uh, make a note about that in the future. And by doing so, these two notes are going to be immediately tied together. So if at some point I ever go in and make a note on levels of judgment, it's automatically going to be connected to this note about how Jesus rewards people's work. And the beautiful thing about this is if I come in and change the view from my note taking view to the preview, is like I can see the Bible text that I was referencing and then I can also hover over and see the different passages much like I would in Bible software and I'm able to do to do that because I have a copy of the CSB Bible over here in Obsidian so like here's Genesis chapter 1 with each verse on its own line which allows me to then reference each of these pieces as I'm making my notes. And then I can come over here 
and you can see how this one note is connected to level of judgment, um, a note that I made in my journal, and then 1 Corinthians 3 and Matthew 16. So all of those are linked to this particular note. So by creating these thoughts, they're in, already interconnected, but that's not the only way that you can take Zettelkasten Bible study notes. So while it works best to keep your notes to a single thought, that's not the only way to use Zettelkasten in your Bible study. So you can also do it with more in-depth studies. And let me show you what I mean by switching over to this note on how do you increase your faith. So what we have here is at the time I was studying Matthew chapter 17 and just reading through it, and I wanted to dig deeper into the concept of increasing your faith. And first, what I did is I started with my own observations on the text, which is this heading right here. And so I was just making my notes and observations as I read. And then what I did is I then looked at and linked it to parallel and related passages, making notes about what each of those verses was talking about as well. So that's what I have down here is my notes. So cross references and parallel passages, which are going to come from like reading your text, looking at your cross references and using other tools. So we see passages that contain the phrase little faith in the CSB. So that was just me doing a quick search, finding those verses. So like Matthew 6, verse 30, Matthew 8, verse 26, Matthew 14, 31, Matthew 16, verse 8, and Luke 12, verse 28. And so then I just made a little note about each of those. And then there are some parallel passages, such as Mark chapter 9, and some other passages as well. And then some other related passages where I just began to make some notes. And then, of course, this led into doing a little quick word study. So then there were some Greek words that I wanted to study a little bit more. And so I did some word studies on those and got some really brief notes. And then finally, what I did is... As I was studying, there were questions that I wanted to answer. And and so that's what these questions are. It's like, what is little faith? What is it? How does someone increase their faith? What does it mean to have great faith? And so I didn't necessarily answer all these because those would be for another note in and of themselves. But I wanted to have them there so that if I ever do come back to it, I can then link to them in the future. And then from there, what I did is I came back and then synthesize all my notes into a singular idea in summary. So that's kind of what I've done up here. And so it's like in this passage, Jesus heals a child who was demon possessed. The disciples were unable to perform the exorcism. So really that's just kind of a full picture of what the passage is about. And then me fully framing out and going back and then updating my observations to take into account everything that I studied down here. And then again, if I switch from the note-taking view to the preview, you can see the passages that I was reading and what stood out. And each of these are linked as well. And you can see I even linked to a sermon that I wrote titled Overwhelming Peace, which was on Philippians 4, 5 through 9 and lots of information there that I can link to as well. So it's not just about what I study in scripture, but also what I study and have done in other places, such as sermon notes, or even things that I'm just thinking about throughout the day, which I do my journaling and obsidian as well. So it's all contained within this singular place. So really, the key to Zettelkast in Bible study is the linking as you make your notes. You want to make sure that your notes link to whatever it is that you're studying, such as a Bible verse or a subject, and make sure that you're, you're linking to that. And this is important because then as you study these passages in the future, your notes will begin to surface and remind you of these ideas and things that you might not have even thought about before when you're reading and studying another passage of scripture, but you've linked to it in another place. So that said, lastly, depending on what software 
you use to take your notes, your Zettelkasten can also include your daily journal entries, which I talked about just a, mi a moment ago with um, Jesus Rewards People's Work. As you can come over here and see, I have a link to a journal entry on um, March 31st. And that was just the day that I, I made that note. And so I made some notes over there, which I'm not going to show you because that's my personal um, journal. But the idea here is that since the Bible relates to all of life and not just like studying scripture in and of itself, you can really connect the Bible to all areas of life. And it makes sense to use a tool like Obsidian for that because then you can connect your Bible study to your daily life. And it really brings in the concept of biblical meditation. So part of biblical meditation is there's the one portion of it, which is intentional, which is like your time of Bible study. But then there's the occasional meditation where you're thinking about scripture throughout the day. And a lot of those thoughts kind of just come randomly and we jot them down in like our journals and that kind of thing. And we can use our journals to link to scripture as well. So really Zettelcast, it allows you to merge all of that together by making little notes here and there and then linking them to all these various places to where we make notes. And that is really the heart of like what Nick Milo says when he talks about linking your thinking. It's not just taking notes and having them be siloed in one place, but allowing you to connect and discover them as they all come together in ways that you might not obviously think about. And it's really just about creating a holistic view of how you engage with scripture. So yeah, so that's Obsidian. That's Zettelkasten Bible Study, and it works much the same way in software like Logos Bible Software. But let's jump back to the video. So now that we've taken a look at what Zettelkasten Bible Study is and how to use it, I want to give you some tools for actually making your own Zettelkasten Bible Study notes. So the first one is Logos Bible Software. Like I said, in our last video, it is a great tool for digital Bible study notes. And out of the box, it's already designed to take great Zettelkast and Bible study notes because their anchoring system is superb. So you can make a note on a passage of scripture, a specific word in a passage, in like thoughts, idea, ideas, themes. You can make notes in your commentaries, dictionaries, or any other resource that you have in there. And because of the anchoring system, your notes are going to be interconnected together. And that is fantastic. Now, Logos Bible Software is a great tool for Zettelkast and Bible study, but I want to give you one caveat when it comes to using Bible software for your Zettelkast and Bible study system. And that is, in my years in working in the Bible software industry, I've seen Bible software come and go. And with that, Bible software companies are essentially a silo. They make it really hard for you to take the notes that you've made in their software and export it to be used elsewhere. And even if they do allow it, you lose a lot of the metadata that is really important for helping you understand the context of those notes that, that you made. So you wanna keep that in mind. And really there was only one Bible software that really made it easy for you to export your notes and do it in a really easy way and that company no longer exists. So keep that in mind. With that said, I wanna to talk to you about a method for Zettelkast and Bible study that will be future-proof and completely liberate your Bible study notes. And that is plain text files. If you've ever used a computer, you've seen a plain text file. They're like readme files that show you how to use a particular software. People use it for taking notes. You can use it for just about anything. And ever since the first computer was made and long into the future, you're going to be able to read a text file because it's just one of those files that is standard to use in a computer. And no matter what system you're using, you'll always be able to read that file. So that is the perfect method for taking Zettelkast on Bible study notes. But here's the thing. One text file isn't going to do much for you because how do you link them together and that kind of thing. 
Well, that's where the software comes into play. And there's lots of great Zettelkasten focused software on the market today. But one of my favorite ones right now is called Obsidian. And it's a free software that you can use on just about any platform, Windows, Mac, Android, iPhone, iOS. So pretty much whatever device you have, you'll be able to use this. And what it does is it takes your text files, pulls them in, and then does all kinds of magic behind the scenes to link those notes together, much like we saw a little bit earlier in this video. But showing you how to set that up is beyond the scope of this video. So what I've done is in the comments below, well, in the description below, I've linked to a series of videos that show you how to set up Obsidian for Zettelkast and Bible study. And these are great videos and I highly recommend checking them out. And really, that's about it. Zettelkast and Bible study is a great method for taking digital Bible study notes and it's going to really future proof how you take Bible study notes because it allows you to take what you're studying in one area of scripture and then begin to connect it to other areas of scripture in a way that makes complete sense and really begin making connections and ideas that you might not have thought were there when you first study those ideas and concepts. So question of the day, are you currently using Zettelkast and Bible study? And if not, is it something that you plan to use in the future? Leave a comment below and let me know. So that's all we got for this video. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button so that we know you like this video and you found it helpful. And it lets us know that you want more video content like this. And also be sure to subscribe so you never miss any of our new videos that we're dropping. And also be sure to check out our website, biblestudy.tips, where we're always dropping new content and our live Bible study weekly on the same YouTube channel. And also be sure to check out our book, which you can find on Amazon called Bible Study Tips which is an eight week series that teaches you how to study God's word in a systematic way. So that's all I have for now. Until next time, grace and peace.